Hello, and welcome to this video on Cyclone JavaScript Services. My name is Rob Ill, and in this video, we're going to talk through some of the key concepts that make up a JSS application. But first of all, what is Cyclone JavaScript Services? Well, JSS, as it's more commonly known, is a complete software development kit for JavaScript developers that enables you to build fully fledged solutions using Sitecore and modern JavaScript UI libraries and frameworks. It enables you to develop completely disconnected from Sitecore and even get your project started without having a Sitecore install set up at all. But why would people want to use JSS? Well, this is beneficial to both developers and marketers. If we look at the developers first, it enables a modern web development workflow. They have the freedom to use the latest JavaScript frameworks, libraries, and any IDE or OS that they want to use. It makes installing Sitecore optional during development, meaning you can build fully fledged Sitecore solutions, be they websites, progressive websites, single page applications, all the time while being completely disconnected from the Sitecore platform during your development process. You can automate the application integration with a code first approach. Your app can be imported into Sitecore and JSS will take care of the generation of all the necessary artifacts. But this is also interesting for marketers too. It allows the marketers to maintain full control, not only over content, but also over presentation and marketing features as well. As opposed to a typical headless CMS deployment, where marketers lose control over the presentation aspect and experience management. With JSS, you can leverage the full experience platform capability, including experience editor support, page level content composition, personalization, multivariate testing, tracking, and analytics. It allows you to achieve a faster time to market and more experimentation. You can do most of the development without having to integrate with a Sitecore platform. You can experiment more by building the app in a standalone environment, testing the UX, and then finally doing an automated integration afterwards. So how does the architecture of a JSS application look? Well, you start off with your development and your CI environment, and your JavaScript developers can use their favorite IDE of choice. Maybe they like to use Visual Studio Code. Maybe it's Atom IDE. Maybe it's Sublime Text they can use the one that they're happiest with. They go through their development process, and once they're happy, they use the supplied import service to import this application as a series of items in the Sitecore content tree. Once the items exist in Sitecore, they're then made available to a series of different services that provide the JSS functionality. You have your GraphQL, OData, Sitecore services client, and various other data APIs. You have the dictionary service. You have your view engine, which is powered by Node.js and does your server side rendering. And finally, you have your layout service. The user then comes along using their browser or application. And depending on how the JSS app is configured, it will pull its data from various different sources to build the application for them. It may even use an external Node.js server to pull in data from the layout service and offload the rendering away from Sitecore. The key part to remember here though, is all the areas inside this dotted line are what exists within the Sitecore deployment. Everything external to that is not part of the Sitecore installation. Now there are two different workflows that developers can work in when using JSS. The first is a code first workflow. When working in this way, the JSS app defines a manifest of the content data and the structure of that data. This enables the JSS app to execute with local content, so it doesn't need a Sitecore instance to get its content. In this mode, the JSS app is the master copy of all of the artifacts. The manifest definition gets imported into Sitecore, which create the necessary structures to support the application. And this is really useful in scenarios like when you're doing early prototyping of a design, when you may not have a Sitecore instance yet available, or if the primary developers on your team are JavaScript developers. Maybe you're dealing with a team of front-end developers who won't have their own Sitecore instances. Or maybe the needs of the app are relatively simple from a content perspective. 
The other approach is the Sitecore first workflow. When JSS is used in a more traditional Sitecore setting, the Sitecore first workflow may make more sense. In this mode, the JSS app consumes data from Sitecore, but has no responsibility for defining the structure of that data, or which components are registered with Sitecore. In this workflow, all developers will need their own development instance of Sitecore, and the JSS site will connect to it to acquire its content and layout data. Most Sitecore first projects will actually begin life with at least one code first app deployment. This is there just to create the structures in Sitecore for the app. Things like the app route, the rendering route, the template route. After this initial deployment, the app can then migrate to operate in a Sitecore first workflow. And this is really useful in scenarios like when the project is led by experienced Sitecore developers who prefer to work in a more traditional workflow. When you have complex content or backend architectural demands, for example, adding a JSS site into an existing Helix style Sitecore instance. Maybe your Sitecore developers are also implementing the JavaScript application. Or if your JSS apps will be deployed and versioned using the same deployment process, the same source control repository, the same actual CI process. On top of the different workflows, there's also five different application modes. We have disconnected development mode. In this case, Sitecore is not required. Everything is hosted locally and the content is sourced locally from disk. Next, we have the connected development mode. Now Sitecore is required. The application is hosted locally, but the content is now sourced from Sitecore. Integrated mode, again, requires Sitecore. The application itself is also hosted in Sitecore now, along with the content data as well. Server-side rendering is performed to allow things like the experience editor to function. Headless server-side rendering mode is similar to the integrated mode. However, the rendering is now performed by a Node.js server, and it pulls its data from a Sitecore content delivery instance. Finally, we have API-only mode. Here's where you consume personalized Sitecore layout data using any platform that understands the JSON data we return. So let's take a look at each of these in detail. With disconnected mode, content data is mocked out using local files. They're JSON, YAML, or JavaScript. You don't get your content from a Sitecore instance. Disconnected mode is really good when there's no available Sitecore instance to deploy the app to yet. Where most developer expertise is in JavaScript, or when it's undesirable to have front-end developers need their own Sitecore instance. For example, if they're running on Macs without a virtual machine to host Sitecore on. All of the sample applications that we provide can be run in disconnected mode. Disconnected mode apps can also import themselves into Sitecore, creating all the necessary Sitecore items for them to later run in connected mode. A common development path might be for an application's lifecycle to begin in disconnected mode and later in development, transition through to connected mode if the limitations of disconnected import need to be circumvented. In connected mode, a Sitecore instance is now required. The Sitecore databases hold the content, the layout data, and the component registrations. Unlike disconnected mode, defining mock data is no longer necessary. When the app is run, the data is acquired from Sitecore using HTTP data calls. In integrated mode, you host your JSS app within a Sitecore instance. The application is server-side rendered by the Sitecore instance, meaning complete HTML is delivered to the user without any initial JS execution on the client. This mode allows your Sitecore users to manage content, presentation, and other marketing features for your JSS app using Sitecore's experience editor. In headless server-side rendering mode, the application it can be run on any platform that supports Node.js and Express, opening up inexpensive rendering engine scaling. This allows the rendering to be performed by the server, server-side rendering by Node as a service provider, for example, Netlify or Heroku. The data is then pulled directly from your Sitecore content delivery instance via the Layout Service API. And this enables full Sitecore marketing and personalization engine support. The final application mode is API only. 
In this mode, you consume data directly from Sitecore's headless APIs, the layout service, GraphQL, dictionary service, and the Cycle services client. API-only mode can be used with any platform that understands JSON data to consume Sitecore provided content and personalized layout information. When the data is used this way, none of the JSS, NPM packages, or indeed any JavaScript is actually required. Now, when you're going to interact with your JSS applications locally, you do this using the JSS command line interface or CLI. Once installed, this gives you all the commands you need to interact with your application. You can, for example, use the create command to start a new project from scratch. You can use the start command to run the application in one of the different application modes we've just discussed. You can also use it to push your changes into your Sitecore instance. There's a lot of other commands which I haven't gone through here today, but if you use the dash dash help toggle, then you'll get a list of all the commands that are available to you. As I mentioned before, JSS gives the developers to use modern JS frameworks, and we support React, Angular, and Vue. Which framework you use for JSS is a matter of opinion. We provide equal support to all three. Now this is a lot to take in, and it's very different to any other Sitecore module we've released previously. So what's the best way for you to dive into this? Well, if you head to jss.sitecore.com, you'll find all of the JSS resources you need to get started, including some sample applications and step-by-step -step instructions on how you can get those running locally. Thanks for watching.